Hey everyone! I'm sorry I'm a little late with this video, but since my first list of fighting game characters from unusual places was fairly well received, I decided to make a sequel featuring some of the names that just missed the cut last time. I also added a few more characters that I discovered and some that you guys suggested, so thank you to everyone that left a comment in the first video. Like before, I'm not saying these are definitely the only fighters from their respective countries, but this might just be the case for at least a few of them. Also, as you probably noticed, this time I'll be counting down 13 entries instead of the usual 10. Why the extra ones, you ask? Well, the truth is that by now I'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel here, and some of these characters come from extremely obscure games, so there's not much to talk about. Also, you know, since I probably won't have enough names to make a third list, it would be a shame to leave someone behind. I will, however, go ahead and make this video into two parts, to make it easier for people who prefer to watch smaller videos. This will be part 1, covering from number 13 to number 7, and we'll save the top 6 for next week. So, all set? Then let's start things up with one of those obscure characters I talked about, because in number 13 we have Isina from Bosnia and Herzegovina. First things first, I'm really just taking a wild gamble here, since I have no clue of how I'm supposed to pronounce her name. Not that it matters too much, though, since there's really not a lot to talk about. Isina is just a shameless ripoff of Chun Li from a game that is a shameless ripoff of Street Fighter 2. To its credit, Jung Pung 3 is at least an original fighting game, albeit an unlicensed one. Released in 1994 for the Sega Master System and Mega Drive exclusively in South Korea, it's a sequel to Jung Pung 2, which was an unlicensed port of Street Fighter 2 with minor alterations. I like the plot of Jung Pung 3 though, which is both ridiculous and awesome at the same time. The world's greatest fighters gather together to stop a Nazi cyborg dinosaur. Yes, you heard that right, a Nazi cyborg dinosaur. We definitely have to go back and look at this game again in the future. But that will have to wait, because it's time to look at number 12 and it's a pair of rare representatives of New Zealand. Jimmy Blood and his brother, Johnny Bad Blood. Appearing in Ready to Rumble Boxing, Jimmy Blood is a furious and malicious fighter, uncontrollable at the sound of the bell. While often criticized for his constant lack of discipline, no one can deny his fight spirit and audacity among the professional ranks. His weapon of choice? Devastating lunging hooks to the head. In the sequel, Ready to Rumble Boxing, Round 2, Jimmy was inexplicably replaced by his brother, Johnny Bad Blood. Contrary to what his name would make you believe, Johnny is a shepherd by trade and a much more composed person. He's still vicious in the ring though, having a mean streak of his own. Both brothers are partially covered by Ta Moko, the traditional tattoo practiced by Maori, the indigenous people of New Zealand, making them rare but great representatives of their country. In number 11, we have the reason why this video won't be making me any friends in China. It's Chuck from Tibet. Coming from Tao Taido, a fighting game developed and published by Video System in 1993, Chuck is the youngest fighter in the game and also one of the nicest, encouraging his defeated opponents by telling them he knows they can do better than that. Too bad for him that his game of origin sucks though. We could spend some time listing all the reasons why, but instead I'm just gonna point out Tao Taido's biggest sin, which is being a shameless cash grab. You see, Tao Taido's fighting mechanics are terrible and its AI is cheap beyond belief. That's not unheard of. But making the game pay to win is a first for me, since you can insert more coins during the match to refill your life bar. In fact, you can do so even before taking any damage, giving you more health than the one you started with. It's fair to say that we won't be seeing Chuck ever again, so Tibet will probably have to look for another representative in the fighting game genre. But it's time to move on to another continent now, because in number 10 we have Ahau from Congo. Ahau comes from Heaven's Gate, a 3D fighting game developed by Rectim and published by Atlas. This seemingly obscure title actually has a connection with the Power Instinct series, which you've seen before in my previous videos, since the console port features one of its fighters, Kurara Hananokoji, as a guest character. As for Ahau, he comes from a lineage of angels and fights to defeat evil forces. Despite his duty as a warrior, he has an easygoing and friendly personality. Among his comrades, it is said that his way of fighting looks more like a dance rather than a combat technique. Though he has some acrobatic moves with attacks that assimilate break dancing, Ahau mostly plays as a grappler, compensating in raw power for what he lacks in speed. In number 9, a fighter from yet another country. 
it's Crusher Ramirez from Argentina. This one comes from the Xbox exclusive Kakuto Chojin Back Alley Brutal, known in Japan as Kakuto Chojin Fighting Superheroes. Published in 2002 by Microsoft Game Studios, the game was originally created as a tech demo to show off the graphic capabilities of the Xbox before the decision was made to turn it into a full game. A few months after its release, Kakuto Chojin was pulled from distribution amidst controversies surrounding the religious content featuring the game. As for the man of the hour, Crusher is a pro wrestler who was banned from every wrestling federation due to his brutal fighting style. Luckily for him, the Feast of Fire tournament has no such boundaries, giving Crusher a new home where he can release his boundless anger and willingness to do anything to get the win. I'm not quite sure how good of a representative he is for Argentina, but hopefully someone in the comments section will be able to chime in and give their perspective as a local. Oh, and if you're curious about the aforementioned religious controversy, like I was when researching the video, it's allegedly due to Quran verses chanted in the background of the theme song for the Middle Eastern character, Assad. It's number 8 now, and maybe it would have been smart not to come all the way to Argentina for the previous fighter, because we're going back to Africa now, to look at Angolero from, well, Angola. Angolero comes from Capoeira Fighter 3, the masterpiece in the series of Flash games created by Scott Stoddard. The first title, Capoeira Fighter, was a generic game with no story and two palette swap fighters. Capoeira Fighter 2 introduced actual characters and hints of a storyline, but it was in the third game when the story was massively expanded, new modes and characters were added, and the whole roster was redesigned with incredibly fantastic graphics that honestly don't deserve to be in a mere Flash game. In his youth, Angolero was a vicious fighter with little compassion for anyone living a life of decadence and indulgence. This was changed when he met his future wife, Rosa, from whom he was willing to abandon his old ways. However, when Rosa suddenly passed away, Angolero was destroyed with grief, nearly dying himself. Since that time, Rosa started to come to her husband in dreams, directing him to people who need his help. Angolero believes that his wife is helping him atone for the sins of his youth. He joins the tournament to look for a female capoeira fighter he saw in a recent dream. While he couldn't make out her features, Angolero believes he can recognize her by her fierce fighting style. Oh, and on a fun note, he is actually one of the strongest characters in the game, easily standing in the top 10, if not higher. You know, sometimes I look into a lot of shitty games to make these lists, but this one was a pleasant surprise. Capoeira Fighter 3 is so much more than I originally thought it was, and I can't help but hope that the series will one day return in a more official manner as the proper game it deserves to be. Number 7 will take us back to Europe for the first time since we started this list. It's Zola from Austria. Zola is a character in the third installment of Battle Arena Toshinden. You know, that series we featured a few times in my first video. So far only appearing in this game, she's an unlockable counterpart to Sophia with a similar moveset to her. Zola's physical appearance is based on Selina Kyle, also known as Catwoman of the Batman franchise and she also exhibits some of the same feline behavior as her, including scratching herself with her foot before the run begins, running on all fours, rubbing her head against her whip as one of her wind poses, and embarrassingly grooming herself as she's defeated. Zola is a popular and well-renowned Austrian opera singer who has long doubled as an assassin for the Soshiki, using her charm, beauty and kinky cat-like behavior to distract and surprise her targets before killing them with her razor-sharp whip. She was once in love with an assassin named Amo, who was killed in the finals of the tournament prior to the first game by Sho Shinjo. Even though she would later date another assassin named Ten Count, Zola still felt like no one could ever replace Amo. As her sorrow turned into bitter resentment against the world and life itself, Zola soon became one of the organization's fiercest and most feared assassins. Under orders from Abel himself, Zola had ventured forth to the third Toshin Daibukai in the hopes of eliminating her target and longtime rival, the Russian private detective Sophia. However, when she discovered rumors that Amo had an adoptive son, Zola changed her plans and started to look for him. She eventually found and even briefly dated him. But the pair decided to part ways, as Zola realized that even him couldn't replace Amo. Heartbroken and emotional, Zola tried to get back to business and lured Sophia into a nightclub to finally kill her mark, but was unable to properly focus and was eventually slayed in battle. 
I gotta say, it's a crazy but compelling story, far more complex than I would expect from a fighting game. It also has quite a few twists and turns, which is strange given the fact that Zola was only featured in one game. As a representative of Austria, she doesn't really have a lot going on, except maybe for the opera references that are present in the names of her moves. So there you go guys, this is where we'll stop this week. Leave your opinions and suggestions below, keep an eye out on the community tab or my Twitter for other announcements, and join us next week for the conclusion of this list. Until then, this has been a Duke Player, and I'll see you guys later.